The current Hyundai Santa Fe Sport and XL, the longer wheelbase version, the one I have here, uh, came out in 2014. So here we are for a 2017 mid-cycle refresh in the face of new products entering the marketplace, like the CX-9 from Mazda, the Highlander is going to be heavily refreshed later this year, and so on. So they're getting sort of ahead of the game here by refreshing this vehicle now. You can see it has a new front nose to it. You get new bumper, headlamps, standard LED daytime running lights, a bigger air opening in the bottom. You get a vent to help circulate the air through the front wheels, around the back, new bumpers as well. But the basis of this vehicle stays the same. It's still 215 millimeters or 21 and a half centimeters longer than the Santa Fe Sport. And these vehicles are gaining in popularity because a lot of people want a crossover vehicle and they're thinking we might as well get those two extra seats, that third row, because we might have to take some extra kids to different events throughout the year. So a three row version of this has become very popular. And I also like this vehicle because it's only available with the six cylinder engine. So the updates on the outside really are quite minimal. This is a carryover from the fluidic sculpture era of Hyundai when they had more sweeping lines. Their newest cars like the Elantra and the Genesis have a slightly different take and I suspect when this car is fully redone in a few years, it'll get that more angular look that we're seeing on the sedans. Inside, some nice changes as well. Now Hyundai has always done a good job of equipping their cars well for a good price. This vehicle starts at 32 grand front wheel drive. You get heated seats in the front as standard equipment. You get a five inch touch screen in the center of the dash. When you want to get heated rear seats, you only have to go up one trim level. That also adds all wheel drive. So that's a nicely equipped vehicle. You want to go up to the larger eight inch screen that we have here. Then you have to go to the $42,000 product, which also adds the leather seats and the big panoramic roof. So that's the one that most people are going to buy. Uh, kind of similar to the way this one is equipped. But on size and on space, it's kind of in keeping with the rest of the products out there. The second row of seats is quite comfortable and large. The seats do move fore and aft, but you can only get in on the passenger side to the third row of seats. The seats in the second row don't slide forward on the driver's side. So you have to get in on the curb and when you get back there, it's kind of tight and not a lot of headroom for adults, but for children, it's going to be more than adequate and you can slide those seats forward to give yourself a little bit more room. The front of the vehicle really hasn't changed. Always was a good design, nicely done. And you know what? They've added Android Auto and Apple CarPlay to most of the vehicles now. I think of all of them actually. And that's really a selling feature for people that want to take the, the power of their smartphone and mirror it onto the screen in the center console. So under the hood, not much has changed. So let's take this for a drive. Now, as I mentioned, this is a mid-cycle refresh. It's not a totally new vehicle. So they didn't mess with what was working and that's the engine, the transmission. And you know what? I do like the 3.3 liter V6 that's available in this vehicle and also shared with Kia. 290 horsepower, that's good output and it's a six speed automatic, no nine speed. You know, that new pilot with the nine speed really doesn't work that well in my opinion. This is good tried and true technology that has the capability to deliver up to 5,000 pounds of towing capacity in a seven passenger vehicle, that's gonna to appeal to a lot of people that have a small trailer. What Hyundai has added is a button here on the dash for drive modes. It changes from the normal setting to eco to sport to change the you know throttle sensitivity and the shift parameters of the transmission to make the vehicle feel a little bit more lively. Hyundai's never really been known for great feedback through the steering and this vehicle is kind of on par with their other offerings, a little bit vague. It's not really a great handling vehicle. It's a good all-rounder in my opinion. I think the star that's kind of shot up to the top in my opinion is that new a CX-9 from Mazda. Sure, it's using a turbocharged four-cylinder engine versus a 3.3-liter six-cylinder, but that engine really delivers great torque. However, when you're into that torque all the time, you're gonna suck fuel, where this will deliver more beneficial real-world fuel economy. So keep that in mind, whether you're shopping for that CX-9 or a Ford Explorer, they have EcoBoost engines with smaller engines. Uh, those engines on paper do deliver great fuel economy, but in real world applications, not so much. You get forward collision warning, pedestrian detection, autonomous braking, lane departure, all of that new safety gear that we're expecting in new modern vehicles. However, it's kept for the top trim. Honda does a much better job on their vehicles of offering 
Honda sensing on lower trim levels and you're going to see other manufacturers like Toyota offering those advanced safety features on all of their vehicles. So you want that stuff, you got to get the top dog. If you don't need it, then this is a good option. If you want it at a lower price, Honda might be the way to go. What a lot of people don't realize is there's someone sitting with spreadsheets and looking on their computer at all the competitive vehicles and all the features they have and they price this vehicle almost exactly the same as everybody else. So it comes down to a few dollars and a few varying features. This is right on the nose with the competition. $32,000 for the front wheel drive base model. That's the only one in Canada that's sold with front wheel drive. All of the others come with all wheel drive and the base all wheel drive is $37,000. The one I think is gonna sell well is the all wheel drive with the first level of leather seats on the inside. That's at 42 and you can go all the way up to $48,000 for the top model. Now, this vehicle is kind of like all of the others in the class. You have to hand it though to Kia and Hyundai for both shooting right up to the top of the initial quality studies from JD Power. Kia's number one overall and number three overall is Hyundai and sandwiched in between one and three is Porsche. So this is in very good company when it comes to building a, a product that people like. I did enjoy driving it. I prefer the V6 engine over the Turbo 4, especially for a bigger vehicle and for towing maybe on the highway. They've done a great job with this. It always has been a good product and they've just polished it up a little bit. Looks better for 2017. Thanks for watching and it really helps if you can subscribe. If you want to watch a full review of the all new Mazda CX-9, click the picture on the left.